So, uh, good afternoon. Um, now we have the pleasure to I have the pleasure to introduce you the second uh, speaker, which is Professor Bokuslaw Szyganek from the University AGH uh, of in Poland. So, um, with uh, well, I will I will let him speak directly. Uh, just a small point: um, all the questions from the Q and A. Uh, will be uh, answered at the end of the presentation because it's quite a big presentation. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you for uh, the introduction. Uh, yes, my name is Bogusław Ciganek and uh, I am working uh, at the University of Science and Technology in Krakow in Poland. I am doing uh, research in computer vision, AI, machine learning, uh, but also I'm programming and uh, I'm a big uh, passionate of, of, of programming. So I've been programming for over 25 years. And also I am teaching students, mostly operating systems, C++. Uh, so this is how I came to this subject because we all are using um, floating points. But sometimes even if dividing uh, the values, we, we question ourselves how should we do this and what are the limits and things like this. So uh, despite uh, <laughs> that I am from the academia, don't be afraid, the math will be kept uh, to the limits with the focus upon uh, practice and some, some hints um, to be used in, uh, in uh, real programs. So uh, here is the agenda. Let's start with um, what we have here. Uh, so we'll talk about uh, floating point uh, computations. Uh, they are related not only to C++, but to, to other computations. So with this ubiquitous IEEE 754 standard, but um, I will not focus much on, on, on bits, but uh, mostly on uh, computational aspects, uh, recipes, uh, standard algorithms. So things, things like this. Uh, so uh, as you mentioned, uh, if you have uh, questions, please uh, jot them down and he will copy this to me. So um, we'll start uh, with questions at the end of, of, of my presentation. So I will, I will not stop at this moment. Uh, okay, so such a simple thing, um, just what we give in the beginner's classes uh, for, for students. Uh, so what, what, what is to be expected? So. Uh, come to my talk and you are welcome <laughs> because 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 is not exactly 0 0.3, which uh, we know, but uh, how to solve these things like this and how to uh, draw some, some general rules, uh, how, to, how to deal with such, such things. We'll, we'll talk about this. Uh, so here is here. Uh, the, the thing. So uh, we can we can uh, fix uh, this this problem and say that 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 is close enough to 0 0.3. Just just taking a difference and, and computing absolute value and uh, just uh, uh, trying uh, it with uh, some small value. And if this is less than a given threshold, we can uh, we can say they are. They are equal, like in this, like in this case. Okay, so here they are equal. So come to my talk, absolutely. Okay, uh, but the question is uh, how to choose this threshold. So what are the limits? If uh, we 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 have seen this is not zero. What is the limit? What is the distance between floating point values? And this is uh, absolutely important question. Just just to consciously use floating point uh, in, in our programs, whatever the language is. Uh, uh, so, um, okay, so we, we can do like this also. So we can uh, multiply both sides uh, by, by 10. And here we see that we have no problem because one plus two is equal to three. So we see that uh, sometimes problem reformulation, just thinking how to uh, in the uh, similar way, uh, describe our problem is, is, is just a fix. But we need to, to, to be able to spot the, the problem at, at, at first. Okay, here's another example. So usually if we have more interactive contact demo, asking what, what is the result of, of, of uh, this um, uh, code, let's generate some, some floats. And, and the question is how many, how many iterations there will be <laughs> 
infinite, um, unfortunately. The problem is, is, is here with this um, um, com comparison uh, to, to, to one. So uh, the fix is just to put uh, less than one, and, and then we can be sure that at least we'll stop. But if we look at this, we see that actually we generated not 10 values, but 11 values, with the last being like, uh, uh, like this, and only 0 and 0 0.5 are exactly what we expected, but the, the rest we see representation of 0 0.1, 0 0.2, etc. So we'll see that such problems uh, in the history also were, were just uh, in real stuff, they, they were problems in real machines, just, just uh, drawing to some, 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 some real, real problems. So uh, we have to be aware of, of such things. So, so now we see uh, what we are dealing with. Uh, we can also go this way and um, start uh, here from, from zero and generate uh, exactly 10, 10 values. And uh, so we, we have rearranged the loop and we know that the loop will generate exactly 10 values. And at each step, we, we add zero, one. So at, at this point, uh, we have exactly 10 values as, as expected in this, in this task. Okay, so now, now we have a series of values. So how to compute a sum in C++ this, this, this time? Because this is a conference about C++. So Let's stick to some C++ code. Okay, so we have this to accumulate. And um, can you spot the problem? Or there is not the problem? Well, if we run this code, the sum will be zero. Obviously, the problem lurks here. We started from the wrong value. Zero is okay, but zero is uh, of integer type. And... Uh, the, the accumulated will be an integer type, so each of these values will be converted to, to int, which in the domain of ints is just cutting off the fractional. Uh, so this is one of the rounding modes, which is different from ints and floating points. So this is the first lesson. We know that, but uh, just to be aware of, of things like this. So a fix is just simple. Just go to the floating point of domain, and uh, we are done, and rounding this time worked for us. So when we uh, sum this up, we have an exact sum. So you, you can see 0 plus uh, 0, 9, uh, 0, 9 and 0, 1 is 1, uh, 0, uh, 8 and 0, 2 is 1, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is this, this uh, we can use this Gauss form formula here to sum the series. So how serious it is? Uh, here is the, the image of, of launch of the Ariane 5 in 1996. Uh, and uh, 30 seconds later, everything was still OK. But 37 seconds uh, since the launch, unfortunately, uh, there was explosion and, uh, and the Ariane 5 was just, just broken. Uh, so what, what, what uh, was the problem? A floating point round of error actually happened, which caused an unhandled hardware trap. So we see that floating points problems, uh, even if uh, they can be uh, maybe lead to some, some errors in computations, they, they can even lead to uh, hardware problems, which uh, final stage is, is uh, such a disaster. And um, you can find even the, the, the film from this uh, event uh, on, on the Wikipedia. Uh, so what, what happened is uh, actually 64-bit floating point value was, was uh, converted to 16-bit signed integer uh, to represent horizontal bias. And this caused the processor trap uh, because the floating point value was too large to be represented by 16-bit signed integer. The problem actually was in um, um, some um, uh, code uh, refactoring because the code was uh, used for Ariane 4 and uh, it was uh, converted to Ariane 5. Actually, it was written in, in, in Ada, but uh, the, the problem would be the same in any, any language, probably. 
Okay, uh, a similar thing happened, uh, I mean, similar in terms of, of uh, malfunctioning or some disaster caused by floating point errors in this Patriot missile. You can find this and then read what, what has happened. Actually, uh, the, the defense uh, in 1991 at Patriot missile system uh, operating in Durham, Saudi Arabia failed to engage in coming scout missile uh, and and many uh, soldiers were, were were killed unfortunately uh, so it was also caused by by problems like we saw uh, a few minutes uh, before just adding one hand to measure time so well just adding this for for a short time is not a problem but when you add this uh, for hours uh, the error accumulates and it can cause a serious problem, especially if, if you are to overtake um, a missile which is uh, 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 traveling 1,500 uh, meters per second. Uh, so uh, let us uh, go into, into floating points um, now. So uh, you probably know this, uh, this representation by heart, so it is... Just as a reminder, we have this uh, sign. Uh, we have mantissa called significant. We have uh, base and exponent. And base usually is uh, two, but uh, in older floating point systems, it was 10 or 16 even. So uh, there are many variants, but in this IEEE 754 uh, standard, we have base two. And um, the, the formula is like this, and we'll see in a moment that this uh, D zero bit uh, is not necessary to be to be stored because uh, it is always set to one in in so called normalized uh, version, um, and also there are some uh, some uh, uh, some some formulas for this exponent. It can be greater by minimum value and maximum value. It is also offset by by some value to 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 avoid some negative values here. Uh, and here is here is the value of, of mantissa. Yes, so we we see that we have uh, p digits of for for mantissa. Uh, so uh, we will go into this in a moment. Um, so some basic facts in FP domain: some real values cannot be exactly represented. We'll see in a moment. Due to the round of errors in the floating point domain, uh, some algebraic conditions don't always hold. For example, this commutative law doesn't hold. So uh, the other uh, uh, way to say it is the order of additions matters, which is maybe a surprise, but we'll see, we'll see uh, examples soon. Uh, floating point representations of numbers uh, are not unique. Uh, the preferable representation of significant with no leading zeros to retain the maximum number of significant bits means that the first bit should be uh, different than zero. So this is the normalized form. But this way we cannot uh, represent zero. So there is a special form to represent zero. We'll see in a moment uh, the, the drawing of, 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 of the spacing. Uh, so we have this, this zero problem and we have very small values which are called the normals. And the uh, exponent is biased to, to, to avoid uh, storing negative values. So here is the, the example. I wrote some simple program to generate su su such, a, such a, uh, experiments. And we see that if we have P3 bits uh, for, for Mantissa, base is two, and we have on, only minus one, zero, one, and two, so we have four groups uh, of, of values. We see them well here. So the, the larger the exponent, the larger gaps uh, in uh, uh, between the numbers. So actually, it is is looking like a quantum field. So we have only exact values at at some points. The rest, you see, we cannot represent well. So we will have rounding errors here. Uh, so um, uh, yeah. So we see that spacing within a single group is, is the, the, the same, but the larger the values are, the larger the exponent, the spacings uh, are, are just getting larger as well. Uh, so here are some, some other examples, but we see that still we have the problem with these small values and, and the zero because we as, assume 
the normalized representation here. So in normalized representation, this D0 bit is always set to one. This way we save uh, one bit, uh, which is used for, for, for sign actually when, when story. So, uh, so what are the most characteristic parameters of uh, floating point representation? So the, the most characteristic is um, uh, the smallest uh, positive value on the last position. So this is for setting only one, the last bit to one. Yes, but please remember that we already set the D0 to one. So this won't be uh, the distance from zero. This is the distance from one, actually. So epsilon is uh, uh, is uh, uh, just machine uh, epsilon uh, is just the distance between value of one and the closest larger value than one. Okay, when we will see this, this uh, constant um, a few times, uh, in, also in computation. So this is one of the most important parameters, and it is different from floats, doubles, uh, long doubles, etc. Let's make an uh, experiment, and uh, this experiment can can show a lot of uh, uh, information about floating points. So let's go to the if uh, if the domain is large then the way to, to analyze is, uh, uh, it is to make a model. So we have a simple model of uh, floating points just to see uh, what we can, uh, what we can uh, draw from, from, from this uh, simple representation. So we, we see one, two, three, four, four groups of values uh, with, which correspond to different exponents. Uh, we see that machine epsilon is uh, still the same, 0, 25, but only from 1, it is the distance only in this group in which exponent is 0. So we see that machine epsilon is, uh, is providing us the distance between the values uh, in floating point representation, because what is the point? The point is that we cannot represent anything what is between this red uh, points because they are not covered in, in our representation. So this is the point. So, so the distance is only in this group, it is machine epsilon, and spacing in each group is machine epsilon multiplied by a base, which is 2, to power of e. So we see it here. So this is 0, 1 to uh, 5, 0, 25, 0 0.5, and 1. Yes, so we, we see it here. But what is more uh, convenient in computation is max spacing in a group. So uh, we see uh, that it is uh, uh, always larger than this delta value here, the maximum spacing uh, in a group. But it is even maximum spacing in this group is lower than minimum spacing in this group. And uh, max spacing in this group is lower than max spacing in uh, in group number two. Uh, so um, we have a threshold. So actually we, we can use this information to, to find the minimum distance between the uh, consecutive floating point values which we can use in our computation. So here is, here is the formula. So this delta is always less or equal epsilon times absolute value of of, of of D, which is just a, a value of, of a floating point uh, variable constant. Uh, so, okay, so with this we can go to the code and just reformulate our first uh, uh, experiment just to something like this. So, so what we are doing here, we are just finding the maximum value because we are looking for the uh, distance from the maximum floating point value because this will be larger then we multiply by epsilon. In a moment, I will show you uh, yeah, how to com uh, compute the epsilon, how to find out the, the epsilon. Uh, and here we can, we can do uh, our computation with this threshold value. So we know, what, what does it tell us? We know that, that the distance between floating point value cannot be uh, less than that, that threshold, which is uh, epsilon times absolute value of, of, uh, of, of, of the floating point value. So this is how we can, we cannot go uh, smaller than that. So this is, uh, this is quite useful in any iterative um, computations. 
in which in the loop we usually compute some value and we compare with previously computed value in the previous step. So this is like in a training neural network. So we compare the error of, of the network. Uh, uh, is it trained already as it's supposed to be or not? Is this error uh, okay for us or not? So we are just in, uh, doing iteration. So, uh, so the question is when to stop the iteration. Sometimes we know this threshold value from the problem, from the numerical uh, computations, from the physics, for example. But in the domain of, of computations, we cannot go less than this threshold uh, from the previous slide, So, which I am repeating here again. Okay, so in practice, we need to compute something like this. So we take maximum value because this threshold will be larger uh, toward max, uh, maximum of the two values. We multiply it uh, with epsilon. And uh, if this value is less or equal than that, we stop iterations because we cannot go closer with, with these values. So certainly they, they can be the same and the left side will be zero, which also fulfills our equation. So here is uh, some, uh, some code example. Usually I put uh, uh, some, some fuse <laughs> for maximum computations. I don't trust uh, that, that, that the convergence will, will happen. So some, some algorithms are not converging, they are ju just jumping on, on some small errors. So it's always uh, good to have um, a maximum on the loop iteration. And then we, we compute the values here, whatever they are. This is only a, a, a boilerplate, a template of, of, of such a com computations. We compute this local threshold where this uh, threshold zero is actually uh, just just a threshold we probably anticipate. Okay, so from from, from our problem, there should be a hyphen here. Okay, and uh, we we take maximum value multiplied by epsilon, and we break if this value is less than than this threshold. Simple. So let's let's compute the epsilon value. We we know that epsilon value is um, is the closest to uh, to to one. So if we write such a loop. We start with some epsilon init value, which is one, and we add it to one and check if this what we add to one is still different from one. And at each step, we divide epsilon by the base, which can be made by, by, by shifts as, as well, if not for floats here. Okay, so um, if we run this code, at one moment, epsilon will be small, smaller than, than the value which makes a difference when we add it uh, to, to one, from one. So at each step, we store the, the previous value because this will be our epsilon. So if we run this code uh, for floats, like, like here, we have this epsilon value, which is one, uh, 1.19, uh, to minus uh, seven, something like this. However, we can uh, we can uh, compute this quite easily using these numeric limits from the limits uh, header uh, from from the standard library, just providing the, the the floating point type we wish. So we don't need to run this code. This code is just just to understand what epsilon is, and we can just just uh, this is a const expression actually, so it is const value. So because I mentioned limits, there are more interesting things in the limits uh, library. There is uh, certainly epsilon, but there is also radix of computation. Uh, we can have digits of mantissa, mean and maximum value. This is quite a useful pair. We'll see it soon when, when uh, delving into, into division. So this is the minimum positive value and maximum positive value for, uh, for normals. Uh, we have also the, we can ask the question if the type has the normals and what is the normal minimum? So we have two different uh, minimum value. Uh, look at this. We also have lowest value uh, and uh, we have uh, some, some additional information uh, if there is uh, infinity um, representation for a type and what is the preferred uh, or default rounding uh, style 
So uh, rounding to nearest is probably the default. Uh, and uh, we can, if we run this, we double at this time, we see that epsilon is to minus 16, radix is 253 bits for mantissa, minimum value is, is this, maximum value is this, this is, these are uh, uh, two positives, has the normals, the normal minimum, look at this, minus three to four, lowest value is uh, with minus, so this is, uh, this is the, the, the negate, minus value of maximum uh, from the previous uh, line, has infinity representation, rounding style, rounding to nearest, and the rounding error is 0 0.5. Uh, so returns, uh, uh, the last thing is the largest possible rounding error, but expressed in so-called units in the last place. So this can vary from a 0 0.5 rounding to the nearest digit to 1.0 rounding to zero or to infinity. So this is unit in last uh, place is just representing the last uh, bit representation in, in our mantis. Okay, so here, how, how can we use this? Because uh, we are doing computations, but not always we are aware of some additional uh, possibilities. So we can, we, can, um, we can express infinity. So uh, uh, like, like this, so here we have a value of infinity and we can actually do some, some computations with it. Uh, we can compute uh, next after. So if, if we have a value like zero, so we can compute the next value in a given floating point representation uh, in a given direction, in this, in this case, uh, into infinity. Uh, we can also uh, do some computations uh, with, which uh, uh, involve next after, uh, for example, here from one, and uh, when we run this code, uh, we can see uh, exactly this. So we see uh, next after zero is this value because this is in the dom domain of the normals. It has this um, uh, rep bit representation here uh, for double and next after one, it's not a big surprise that this is one and our epsilon value at the end. Okay. And this also has one bit uh, set in bit representation. But contrary to next after zero, it has also one in the in the first uh, first digit pos position of, of of the significant uh, other name is mantissa from, from, from this. Okay, so this is the normal, and this is epsilon. What I what I mentioned. So we can also do computations actually with this uh, zero value infinity. So if we divide by zero, uh, the the result will be infinity. Uh, so we can we can see what what will be printed uh, with infinity. We can check if infinity is exactly represented as infinity, and what happens if we do some mathematics with infinity. But also interesting is to see uh, what happens if we perform some uh, some uh, operation which is uh, which is not possible. Uh, which sometimes happens, sometimes this value is, uh, we, we are expecting something close to zero, but it happens to be negative, and uh, then we, we jump with this not a number uh, problem. So what, what is if we add not a number to, to something? Uh, if we run this code, we see that in, if we divide by zero, then we have infinity. Um, uh, adding something to infinity is infinity. Dividing by infinity gives zero. And um, uh, doing some computations with uh, not a number is, is, is again, uh, not, not a number. Uh, so uh, a good uh, way to program uh, is to, to put some, some assert uh, just to see if, if any step of our computation is not generating, for example, not a number or infinity. But also be aware of hardware trap. In many systems, we can turn off, but also turn on uh, tra traps associated with, with problems in floating point computations, especially in an embedded systems. And this can cause many problems as, as we have seen with this Ariane 5 uh, pro projectile. 
Uh, also, sometimes doing computations, uh, just uh, just uh, raising minus three to the power, which is not uh, integer value, uh, is is taking us to the complex domain, and this also will generate uh, not a number. So we have to be aware of of such things. And as I mentioned, as a third can can uh, save uh, us from 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 troubles. So now uh, let's go to rounding modes. Uh, this is big subject. Uh, I already mentioned that uh, we are actually just just uh, uh, doing computations in the, in the quantum domain. So so uh, roundings are inevitable because we we need to, to represent some real values with uh, only limited representation. But uh, how to do this? How to do this, and uh, how it is done in the in the standards? I will well, I will go through through the main things. So we can uh, doing computations. We can uh, encounter overflow, which means that the result is too large to be correctly represented. Underflow is too small to be correctly represented. Inexact, the result cannot be re represented exactly. So we we saw this example as well. Or, or invalid operations such as dividing by zero of square root from negative value, which uh, results in not a number, which we already seen as well. So uh, let's take a look at, at the problem of rounding. So if X is just a real value and we have two possibilities uh, of floating point representation, Xn and Xn plus one hat, then uh, the, the closest one, in this case, x1 plus 1 will be chosen because it is, uh, it is uh, closer to x value. And the maximum error which we are doing here, so this is uh, one ULP, uh, the distance here, so the maximum error is uh, one half of this ULP. So this is what actually the, the limits library is giving us, uh, telling that, that the error is 0 0.5. This is exactly this this value of, of ULP. So this is explained. And uh, look at this, depending on the group, depending on the exponent, uh, we have a different ULP and different error. In other words, the larger the value, the larger the error will be. Uh, okay, and let's, let's go for a moment to, to the standard. I will not go to this all these bits. These are not, not so important. So this is uh, this is the represent, representation of the 754 uh, standard, uh, uh, which we actually are using in the majority of, of contemporary languages. This uh, allows us to exchange software, exchange data between packages, which is good. And um, we have a number of representations. So what is important is a couple of facts. Uh, we have so-called single precision and double precision, uh, which are uh, uh, which are the most uh, common. This the first one is represented with float and uh, four bytes with uh, 24 bits for for uh, mantissa and uh, eight bits for exponent. Um, uh, we have a double representation in C++, uh, 64 bits, but also we have extended precision. Uh, which is 10 bytes, which uh, on some compilers corresponds to long double, and we have quadruple precision occupying 16 bytes, also represented with long double. So uh, when doing computations, please assert, check what your system is representing as long double if you go to these uh, computations, uh, because, okay, this is what, what I already mentioned with this hidden uh, bit trick, we, we save on one bit with the base uh, two, uh, 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 but uh, just returning to, to, to the standards, uh, double requires only that it is at least as precise as float and long double is uh, as precise as, as double. So you can be surprised when going from one compiler, one system to the other. Uh, so please check this, please assert in your code, especially if you are porting from, from one system to the other or just uh, dealing with uh, legacy code. Uh, we have also this encoding for infinity, minus infinity, zero. So we have two zeros, so it is redundant here, but we have also some representations to not a number uh, values. And um, C++ 
significant and exponent are especially encoded to represent uh, this, the special values. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, the uh, exponent is, is, is shifted to, to avoid negative values. Uh, we have this, the normals, uh, uh, which I mentioned, but one thing uh, which I should mention on some systems uh, doing computations on, on the normals is uh, slow, so some people are trying to avoid them. We, we can avoid by, by shifting some computation to larger values than at the end uh, subtracting the, the value. Okay. Uh, and the nearest mode default is uh, run to nearest, uh, uh, as, as I already mentioned. Uh, but please remember that this is different from integers, uh, which just cut off uh, fractional and they run toward zero. Uh, okay. So this is, this is important to, to remember that we have different rounding modes, uh, especially if we try to compute something or change from integers to, to floating point values or vice versa. Uh, and here is, uh, I will not go to, uh, to details of, of computations in floating point, how they are organized in, in gates, how the algorithms run, but one important thing is, let's do this experiment. We are doing uh, addition of two values. Uh, uh, we have only three positions and the base this time is 10. And the first is to, to minus one, and the, the, the second is to minus three. What we need to do to, to, to sum these values? We need to uh, right shift the lower with the, with the lower exponent in, in, in this case. So what we are actually doing, if we do this, look at this. We are losing this uh, seven, eight, because we, we, okay, we have the same exponents now. So if we have no additional positions for this, uh, um, bits, we are losing them. So this is uh, this is the mechanism of of uh, losing precision when when doing additions, and we'll return to this problem in a moment. Uh, so we need to remember what is the lesson from this. Uh, try to avoid if you can, if you can try to avoid uh, adding values uh, with large differences in exponents. Okay. We'll return to this problem. Here we lost only 78, 0, 0.78, but we can lose much more. Uh, okay, there can be also a problem when subtracting values, uh, which are nearly equal in magnitude. Uh, and the, this is called catastrophic cancellation. So uh, what happens, for example, if we subtract uh, two values, two, seven, y, one, eight, two, eight, Two seven one eight two nine, which already are rounded from from other values. So uh, the the most significant positions will cancel out, and we are only left with uh, one at the last position, which can uh, uh, which is then promoted uh, to the first position because exponent is is adjusted, and we have a really uh, large error. So. This is called catastrophic uh, cancellation. So uh, when we can, can, can meet such, such a thing, so uh, from many books, this is the uh, easiest example. Uh, here we can have a problem if uh, uh, the product AC is, is almost the same like B square and uh, B is, uh, is negative. So if B is negative, this, this first value is, is positive and we are just subtracting from, from the similar values, okay? Uh, so what to do? We can reformulate, we can use the observation that the product of x1 and x2 value in this uh, second order polynomial is just C. And so once again, reformulation of the problem is, is a fix. Let's go to the code. Here is the code. I compute this uh, D value. Uh, the value is, is positive. So if B is negative, I am computing from this formula and then use the second one. And in, in a different scenario, I am computing here is uh, B is positive. So this is also addition with the negation uh, outside this uh, parenthesis. So I am safe. But the question now is, and we are going now to the problem of division. 
So, okay, is it okay to, to, to divide by, by this A plus A? Well, maybe we should try to, to check it if this is not a zero, but checking against zero is not enough. We need to check against some, some threshold. Now we go to this, uh, to this, to this problem. Uh, here is another example of, of this uh, uh, catastrophic cancellation, but let, let's go to, to division because time is short. So um, uh, if we divide the values like this, uh, so what is a valid division? A valid division is if we can uh, convert this and uh, compute A from multiplying C by B. So we see from this that B cannot be zero because whatever we multiply by zero will be zero, not, not necessarily A. Uh, so the first rule is certainly like we, we are taught in the school, don't divide by zero. But uh, in the floating point, things are not uh, that simple, unfortunately. So let's, let's analyze the problem shortly and give some recipes. So certainly if, okay, let's, let's uh, focus on positive and uh, not the normal, so, so normal values. So they are, they are just restricted. If now we are in the domain of uh, floating points, A, B, C are floating points, so that they need to be larger than minimum and less than maximum uh, value, which we can compute from this uh, limits uh, library quite easily. We already saw this, this, these values. So uh, let's analyze our problem and, and draw some conclusions. So if uh, we, uh, if B, B cannot be smaller than K minimum, neither value can be smaller than minimum. So if we said this, then we come to the conclusion that A must be less than the product K min, K max. This is an interesting puzzle. What is the value of this product? Uh, Okay, but what we, what we can draw from this is if we multiply the two sides by a certain value f, so b is a little bit larger, then also a can be larger. So here, here is just a hint of, of this value. Uh, it's almost four. Surprise. For me, it was a surprise at, 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 at first. Then I just derived the formula, and this is just, just, just this. Here is uh, uh, P minus two. Uh, okay. So, uh, le but let's go to, to some, some, some practical result. So if we can uh, superimpose some maximum value on the dividend on A, then B should be larger than A max divided by K max. So this give, gives us a, a clue how to divide values in floating point, so the result is valid, still uh, can fit into representation. So this is quite useful, simple, but um, maybe not that well known. So, but this assumes that we know a max. Sometimes we know it, sometimes we don't. So here is uh, the solution if we know a max. So we, we compute minimum value, maximum value for our floating point representation, whatever it is. Uh, we compute this capacity, which is the product. We have uh, epsilon just, just at hand, and we have uh, three ABC values. And now we assume, for example, that A max is 1 to 20. Uh, so uh, this is our maximum coming, for example, from the, from the measurements. Okay? So B minimum can be computed from, from this formula, A max by k max or k min, because neither value can be less than, than k min. And here is the, uh, the condition if uh, a is smaller than a max, certainly absolute value and absolute value of b is greater than this b minimum, we can divide. If not, then we have some, some, some sort of problem. But sometimes we don't know what is a max, so we can go the other way, we can assume something on the minimum value of divisor and on, on, on the B value. So let's, let's go this way. So, okay, let's, let's assume we have B minimum. So in this case, A should be less than this B minimum, 
multiplied by k max, which is quite uh, quite large value depending on b minimum. Uh, so how to guess this b minimum? Certainly, it can be known from computations. If you are doing in uh, nuclear physics, you will know what is your particle size, for example, minimum. But a practical hint: you can use machine epsilon. It is uh, two minus uh, nineteen. Uh, in double or something like this. So it is uh, in many, many, many computations. It is it is uh, it is small enough. It is lower limit, which already uh, leaves uh, high, high, quite good value for for uh, a. So here is code example. Okay, we assume uh, epsilon for 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 b. Then maximum epsilon related value for a is epsilon multiply k max, and we compare only uh, here a with a max, and b must be larger than epsilon, then we can do uh, division. Okay, and now we entered, oh, I, I see some, some questions, oh, difficult, hmm, okay. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's, uh, let's finish with, with some example of summing up um, the floating point values, the main observation, just recall, order matters in floating point. In real life, not necessarily, but here it matters. So not a surprise that if we run a code of additions in parallel, we can have different results. So let's, let's make some experiments. This is inner product, just, just computing um, uh, sums of products of corresponding elements of two vectors V and W. Uh, this, this can be used, for example, to measure a distance be between vectors, especially if they are normalized. So how we do this? This is very, very common operation. Uh, uh, each uh, digital filter, which we are using now just to, for this transmission, is just doing this, multiply and accumulate that the cornerstone of our civilization, of our digital civilization. So uh, we'll see how simple multiply and add method works, but we'll see what happens if we sort the elements first. Remember that we should also avoid uh, adding values which differ significantly in exponents. So maybe sorting is, is helping, but also we can have a very simple uh, algorithm which uh, has a correction factor called Kahan summation, which can help. So we'll focus upon this, this method. So, um, uh, and we, we will see a sequential parallel uh, realization of, of this, of this algorithms. So we know that we have stood accumulate, but in this light, not necessarily this is the best option. If we have a large stream of data, for example, video and we uh, compute some, some convolutions, for example, just using uh, inner product. And remember that we are not commutative uh, in this domain. So here is that uh, simple sequential multiply and add method is uh, organized like this, vectors are, elements are multiplied and the sum is just, just uh, progressing from, from one value to, to, to the n. Uh, so uh, code for this, is just an inner product, probably you know this from standard uh, library, uh, vectors and, and starting value uh, here, which is some, uh, some, some value type from the vector. So we, we avoid just, just writing explicitly type using, uh, we use using uh, and, and uh, here it is the simple sequential version. But we can do better. Remember this. We lost because we are uh, adding values of different exponents. So maybe if we arrange them before uh, summation, we'll have better results. Let's do it. So we have first thing, we multiply elements and store them in a Z vector. Then we sort the Z vector, but we sort with lambda expression here, just uh, watching only magnitude, because this is what counts in this, in this uh, problem. And then we call accumulate. And now we call accumulate on Z, which is already sorted. 
So we'll see results in a moment in the table. But we can also do some uh, improvement to, to uh, accumulate and write uh, our summation uh, loop ourselves. Actually, this, this was proposed by, by Cahan and only modified by myself to, to inner product. So uh, we multiply the, the two elements, we compute this value, and we'll subtract the magic correction factor, which I will explain in a moment. Then we have the sum, the, the growing sum, growing sum, which we add this, this value. And here the, the problem is, because the sum will be uh, larger and larger and larger, and we add some value with uh, some, some fractionals. And the bigger the difference in exponent will be between these two, the bigger the loss of fractionals. So here is the correction factor. So correction factor, I, I have a drawing in a moment explaining this. So correction factor is actually computed just reversing this, this summation here. And the sum is then, then corrected. So how, how does it work? So first we have this probably large sum because this is already, it already accumulated a lot of values. And we are adding this relatively small uh, y value, which is, uh, uh, because of these shifts in exponents, uh, is enough only to add this y1 part, uh, while this y2 part is gone because of the shift. So the, the, the point now is how to recover this y2. So we have this uh, t value, which is just, just some of this, this, this previous one. So we see that y2 is gone. But if we compute uh, minus uh, t sum from, from t, then we have this value. So we re recovered uh, y1. And now adding minus y to this result with uh, y1, because the exponents are the same, we are recovering y2, which goes to c. Smart, devised, devised by Kahan in 1965, but uh, not so popular. So we have this at hand, so let's, let's use it. So accumulate is not always the best uh, solution. What can we do more? Certainly, we can go in parallel. So uh, a standard library comes with this execution policy, execute parallel, and we can just reformulate our algorithms, uh, but Please recall that we don't have this for inner product. We can use the quite strong algorithm transform and reduce. It can do a lot, a lot, a lot. If you are not using it, please go to the reference and, and see how it operates because it is quite useful function. What actually it does, it does uh, transform using this lambda. So it is multiplying each element and then reducing these results by summation using this first lambda. However, it can run in parallel. Not a surprise after uh, this talk that from run to run on large buffers, we'll get different results because uh, the order in parallel execution can be, uh, can, be, can be different from run to run. We'll see in a moment. So here is this... Uh, uh, powerful transform reduce uh, function, quite useful. And uh, stood execute part. Uh, we can also do uh, transform in parallel, sorting in parallel, and accumulation uh, and, and sorting value. So we can also make, make uh, improvement to, to this second algorithm in our experiment. And the third experiment is just to divide to make parallel Cahan summation algorithm. It is not easy to make it parallel in the loop, but we can make data parallelisms here. So here is our uh, representation. So we do in parallel these computations, uh, and then we sort and do Cahan again. And we compare on this uh, experiment. So we have a dot product of V and minus V and W and W. So the results should be zero. So we know this from, from theory. So we, we generated a couple of, excuse me, couple of uh, 
random values, uh, actually a couple of millions of random values, and um, generated these two vectors and ran each of these algorithms uh, on, the, on the same data uh, set. Uh, so here is uh, to, to, to generate V and minus V or W and, and W uh, just, just to, and using this, this, uh, this funny lambda, which is mutable here, just to be able to, uh, to advance uh, N when generating, uh, when generating the values. Uh, certainly, you, 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 can, you can have this code. Uh, I, I will give you the, the, the link to that. Okay, so, so he, here we prepared our data set. We know that if we multiply this, uh, the result should be zero. And what we have here, a lot of algorithms, but the last uh, two uh, or three columns, three columns uh, from the right side, these are just for reference. Uh, they are guaranteed to be correct because these are libraries of any precision. So we can use, uh, for example, this 908 algorithm uh, which uses a uh, long accumulator, and we used here uh, 20 million of, of N uh, values, which is quite, uh, quite, quite large. And look here, uh, uh, the errors can be really catastrophic ones, especially for simple accumulation, we have always errors. Uh, with uh, uh, transform reduce also, but sorting, look at sorting. Sorting is giving zero, which is correct, but the running time is two orders of magnitude uh, compared to, to other algorithms. And the Kahan, simple Kahan, is not uh, doing large errors for small. Uh, delta here is just, just exponent. <coughs> it's another parameter, uh, how, how big values are, uh, we are adding. You can find details in our paper from the conference. Here is the title at, at, the, at, the, at the end. <clears throat> but look at the Kahan parallel version. It is the fastest one and correct one compared to 908 parallel version. So this is something worth uh, the sin of using it. Okay, so here we have good results, but actually for sort, uh, we are paying the price. So uh, we are at the end, conclusions. Uh, in the FP domain, we always work with the approx approximated values. So we have to uh, get accustomed to that. So a round of errors are inevitable. So we can also face overflow, underflow, underflow as well. Uh, the commutative law doesn't help. So in other words, in floating point, order of additions does matter. Uh, machine epsilon is quite a useful uh, constant value. So just, just uh, try to understand it and use it in your computations. So this is the distance from one and the largest, the closest largest value from, from one, not from zero. Adding values with different exponent leads to large errors. So it's good thing to arrange them uh, according to their absolute magnitude value. Subtracting close values can lead to severe cancellation errors. And here are some conclusions with some uh, regarding IEEE standard. Uh, so this is uh, what we know, floating and double formats, uh, but we have also uh, different uh, rounding from integers. Uh, and we, we have this uh, numeric limits uh, library which we can use to, 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 uh, to draw some, some important uh, information about our representation. Uh, here, here are some, some rules for subtracting values. So remember this, when subtracting floating point values, you cannot go less than the minimum distance uh, between the values. And this minimum distance is just epsilon multiply with uh, whichever is, is, is maximal here. Uh, when dividing, we can use two rules. Either you assume the maximum from the top on A max, or you assume the minimum uh, from the bottom on, on B. And the rest can be computed just uh, once again using this numeric limits, mean and max uh, value. What we have more? 
A uh, special care must be taken when summing up long series of FP numbers and accumulate is not the best solution in, in such cases. Uh, also, please uh, look at transform reduce because this is a, a real uh, machine for, for a lot of algorithms. So it is quite, quite interesting and useful function. Uh, simply sorting elements before adding can, can help if, if we are not, not so constrained with, with time. Also, we have this uh, execution parallel policy in standard library, so let, let's use it. And we have this summation Kaha method, so it can be also used. It is quite a simple addition, uh, which, which uh, helps uh, with this. Uh, and the hybrid compensated algorithm can be, can be parallelized. And here are some uh, literature, Donald Nutt, uh, Kahan, uh, uh, Higam. This is very useful, what every computer scientist should know about floating point by Goldberg. Uh, this algorithm 908 described is quite interesting thing. A uh, couple of, of uh, things about the standard, also about this uh, GMP library for arbitrary precision. So if you need to go with arbitrary precision, Take the library. There is another good library for that, uh, which uh, I used in this experiment. And also there is our paper uh, with this uh, floating point computations, additions, this uh, multiply accumulate uh, investigation. And also I, I have finished writing this introduction to programming with C++ for engineers. So there is a, a separate section, number seven, uh, only about the uh, uh, fixed point numbers and floating point numbers. So if you are uh, interested, it will be available August uh, or September this, this, this year. Also, you can find the code from this book uh, on the GitHub and on my web page. So please enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's, that's all. Are, are there any questions? Um, question number one. Uh, in your calculation, you created infinity using this. Should we get negative infinity? Yes, yes. But this is the problem of represent of having two zeros, uh, of having two zeros uh, in, in the representation. So there are, there are different ways. Okay. Uh, Manuel, do you know why the parallel Kahan summation without sorting doesn't have any error? Can this be proven to be? No, no. Unfortunately, this, this is not, not proven. Uh, this is observed uh, because Kahan uh, is, is not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed. Uh, but uh, if you split into small chunks of data, then these guarantees are, are, are quite high. Okay, no other questions for the moment. Okay, so if you have any questions, I am on the email. I will be at, at some tables in this virtual room. So thank you once again. And uh, I switch off, I think. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>